Let's bring in Ben White, chief economic correspondent with Politico, also a CNBC contributor, and Andy Blocker, Invesco Global Head of Public Policy and Head of U.S. Government Affairs. Gentlemen, welcome uh, to both of you. Uh, ben, let me start with you. How much of this is really a legitimate budget proposal, and how much of this is uh, the beginning of the, of the Biden platform for re-election in 2024? Uh, good to see you, Tyler. I would say 0% essentially is a real budget document, and 100% is the kickoff of his campaign in 2024. As Kayla laid out, none of these soak the rich uh, proposals are going to become law in this Congress. Uh, the Biden administration doesn't think they are, and they won't even be taken up. Quadrupling the buyback tax, no. Raising the corporate tax, no. What's important to note here is the overall leftward shift of the Biden administration as it moves toward re-election and its messaging. A lot of it sounds uh, like pulled from the Trump playbook without Trump's uh, you know, uh, rhetoric, obviously, but the protectionism and uh, soaking the rich sort of stuff, uh, some of that comes from Trump. Uh, but what Biden is doing is saying, you know, I'm going to attack uh, where people are upset, and that is on uh, people making too much money and them making not enough money. So there's going to be a lot of that kind of class warfare rhetoric in there. Uh, and they don't expect any of these revenue sources to actually materialize in terms of raising taxes right now. Andy, how do you respond or react to what uh, Ben just said there? And, and second, let me advance the discussion by asking you how this complicates or helps or gets started the discussion over raising the debt ceiling. Well, I think Ben is spot on. I think this is fairly much, pretty much a, a political document. Uh, but it does outline its priorities. Um, and it says, hey, I can reduce the deficit uh, without hurting uh, Medicare and Social Security and do it without raising taxes on those making under $400,000. Those are his talking points. But I, what I do think it does, and I think you've hit this yourself, is it starts the actual drawing of lines in the sand with respect to the debt ceiling debate. We've had you know, meetings at the White House and different discussions, but we really haven't gone into negotiation. This is the first shot across the bow, and it says, hey, I've got my budget. Over to you, Republicans. Please show your hand. What are you willing to cut? And so far, the Republicans, as I understand it, have not done that. Am I right, uh, Andy? That's right. They haven't, they haven't done it so far. Um, they haven't showed their hand. And even in the State of the Union, you saw uh, President Biden pull them out and say, hey, you, do you really want to cut uh, Social Security and Medicare. So I think they're on their heels right now in that, and they're going to have to come together. Look, I think they're going to try to do something. They have the, the House Budget Committee chair is intent on putting forward a budget, but then you're also going to have the House Republican Study Committee, the House Freedom Caucus, and you have all these different budgets from different Republicans. And the tough job is going to be for Speaker McCarthy to bring all those ideas together, get the caucus together, and actually have the Republicans get to 218 to, to, to vote on it. Speak to that point, Ben. Uh, uh, Speaker McCarthy had such an easy time winning the speakership. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, so easy. Uh, very easy. Uh, th this, this is going to be no simpler. No. Yeah, Tyler, it's a mess, and they're, they're nowhere on this, and Republicans will uh, call this dead on arrival and, and not an opening salvo that's worth anything and their time to look at. So we're nowhere on that. And McCarthy has a incredibly difficult path uh, ahead of him, partly because of the strictures he agreed to when he got the job, including basically one member uh, can raise an objection to his speakership and bring him down. Somehow he's got to corral 218 to get a uh, debt limit deal through. I, I think like in all of these, somehow, some way, 11th hour, uh, it gets figured out. But it's going to be herding cats, snakes, whatever it is, metaphor you want to torture uh, to make it happen. And it's going to make us all sweat and nervous in the meantime, because they are so far apart on this. I think Republicans have to back off huge spending cuts, though. There's not much public appetite for it now. That's more a Tea Party way of thing. Uh, but there still are fiscal conservatives in there. How they figure out the mix to get to 218. Uh, pop the popcorn. I have no idea. Andy, what would you add to that? And we already see, for instance, Treasury bills pricing in, you know, a relatively high rate of default for the U.S. government. Yeah, no, I think Ben's spot on. It's hard to see how we get from here to there, how first we, the Republicans get to 218. Um, but they need to get to 218 if they're actually going to have, have a negotiating position. If they don't do that, then President Biden can really put the pressure on him to raise the debt ceiling without any kind of budget reforms. But if he gets to 218, that changes the game a little bit. That moves it to the Democrats to say, OK, I've, I've got a plan. They'll, they'll attack all the spending cuts because they're not politically, salvo, uh, politically popular right now. But 
there are a lot, two thirds of the Senate are Democrats up for reelection. And once that negotiation starts, you're going to see a lot of Republicans, Tester, Manchin, Cinema, just to name a few, who are going to want to do a deal. And so um, I think pressure is going to be on both sides. But right now, all the pressure is on the Republicans. Yeah, but but you you, see, you mentioned those three. Those three are Democrats who are going to want to do a deal, right? Tester, Cinema, Manchin. That's right. But that, yeah, but 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 the Republicans put that pressure once they come together. If they show they they can come together, mm -hmm. they can agree on something. That puts some pressure on the Democrats to play ball. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In many ways, yeah, I've felt uh, over the past couple of years, Joe Manchin's the most powerful man in Washington. Anyhow, uh, Ben White, no Andy Blocker, thanks, guys. Appreciate